Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, yes, it's been a very, very, very long time. Lots of months have gone by since you've seen me. Um, this lighting is absolutely terrible, but as you can see, I'm in a new setting. This is my bathroom. I have moved, so I had a lot of crazy things going on in my life. Like, it's literally crazy, like, literally ridiculous. That's how crazy it is. Um, so I'm filming in my bathroom because my studio, which is where I was going to record, is kind of a mess right now, so, um, I will fix that another day. So for now, I wanted to get this video out, so I'm gonna just record in my bathroom. You guys can see me. You get the point. Um, so, yeah. How you guys have been? I hope you guys have been good. Um, I hope the holiday season is treating you well. I hope that you guys are healthy and safe, you know, with everything going on with COVID and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, today's video is actually kind of a serious video, um, that I've been wanting to make. I posted about it on Facebook, seeing if anybody was interested in seeing, like, the harsh reality of being a business owner, because as you know, I am a business owner myself, you know, and I wanted to share with you guys my experiences with being a business owner. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, just keep on watching. Okay, so I'm not really going off of like any like notes or a script or anything. I'm kind of just going off of, you know, my noggin up here and what I wanted to talk about. So hopefully I get everything I wanted to say out and hopefully I don't forget anything. Um, but I guess starting around, like starting out, I started my business in January slash February of 2020. Um, so I have two aspects to my business. I have the service side of my business. So those of you know that I do lashes, um, basically cosmetology kind of stuff. And then I have my product business, like merchandise business, which I officially launched that in May. So it was about like the day after my, uh, how old did I turn this year? 23rd, 23rd birthday or whatever. So I've, you know, I've been in that realm. We're now in December for a long time now. And coming up soon, it'll make one year since I've launched my service side of my official business. Um, I did register my business officially, I believe in February as well. Um, so things that I have learned along the way and like the harsh realities of this is, I went into this blindly. I did not know how to run a business. I have not taken any classes for business or management, none of that. So I just kind of was like, I want to start a business and that's exactly what I did. Did I do any research into that? No, I didn't. Um, and I guess throughout this video, I wanna give you all tips so that way you don't do what I did, I guess, you know? Or you can, like, if you're wanting to start a business, you can, like, think about, like, okay, I need to have X, Y, Z done so that way you don't do what I did wrong. You know what I mean? So when I launched my business, Doll Like Beauty, which is the entire brand itself. So Doll Like Beauty has services, Doll Like Beauty has merchandise. So it's like one big umbrella for me. That's how I want to do it. My bad, I just got a phone call. And I had to answer that. Anyways, moving on. Um, I don't fully remember what I was talking about. And I actually don't plan on editing this out because my channel, I try to show that, you know, we are real people. We're not robots. I don't operate off of a script or anything like that. You know, real. And then so far, most of my audience has really enjoyed that they get to see a real YouTuber. No one who's acting fake on camera, you know, anything like that. So I guess I'm just going to move on from whatever the hell I was talking about. Whoops. <laughs> So yeah, the services and the products or whatnot. So the biggest thing so far out of both sides of my business that I have noticed that was something that I really needed to fully grasp on is that, and this is also goes for you guys as well, who's wanting to start a business or whatever, um, would be to not rely on your family and friends. I don't mean that to be rude or anything like that to any family or friends who are watching me. It's just something that is legitimate. And if you have a business yourself or looking to have a business, or if you were selling anything yourself, you would also notice that and see that. So it's honestly true. You cannot rely on your friends and family to be there to support you. That's not always gonna how, like, that's not how it's gonna work. It's not always gonna work that way. If it does for you, that is wonderful, that is perfect. But that's the harsh reality behind running a business is that yes, you may like post about it on social media and whatnot. You may think your friends and family are happy for you, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have some of those who say they're happy for you, but are gonna be the first ones clapping when you're failing. You know what I mean? So your biggest supporters will be strangers, people who do not know you. 
Um, and I did notice that, like right off the like right off the bat, that the biggest supporters will be strangers. The, your number one sales will probably be strangers. Um, you know, and that's just how it is. And if you were to become a huge, huge business, that might change. But then that shows you the type of people that you are associating yourself with. That when you're small and nothing, that you don't have the support of your friends or whoever. And then all of a sudden, when you become a huge, big icon, all of a sudden, all your friends are now wanting to support your business. That's something you got to keep in mind. And it's just a harsh reality that I have to face. Because anybody who knows me knows that I don't like confrontation. I don't like negative things. I don't like, you know... Anything like that, that has to do with how people think of me. Um, and it's something that had to become a harsh reality check for me because you may think that, oh, I'm going to have a, a huge amount of people who are going to support my business when I launch. And then that's just not what happens, you know. And if you're like me, I, like I'm going to bring astrology into this. I am a Taurus, sun, moon, and a cancer rising. So if you understand what that means, you would know why I am very, very, like very big on what people think of me and how it does kind of hurt to know that not all your friends and family actually support you you know so take take that information with what you will um but that was my number one source of advice because that can make or break a business sometimes depending on how you operate yourself mentally when it comes to the business is like if you rely on friends and family to try to help you get off the ground then you're not going to do as well as you would hope to do that's something you just got to remember so you need to uh, focus on advertising. Um, I will say that I, after COVID happened, I did have COVID in August of 2020, so this year. Um, so after I had COVID and a lot of things happened, um, I stopped promoting my business like I did, like I used to. I stopped posting photos. I stopped paying for advertisements, all that kind of stuff. And that really tanked my business. It really did. Um, and I'm still trying to recover from that, unfortunately, especially being a small business owner. And anyways, this year is a kind of a sucky year for small businesses, of course, and big businesses, but mainly small businesses. Um, so if you, now that you've heard my advice about making sure you're, you're worried about more strangers than you are friends and family to make sure you have good advertisements, you know, paying for ads. So that way you do reach out to strangers. So that way strangers see you and know that your business exists. Um, that's another number one, another, um, top business tip that I could give you. So something that I noticed when I first launched my business that really did work for me was Snapchat ads. So Snapchat ads is basically <clears throat> where you, you're basically paying for an ad kind of like you would for Facebook or Instagram. Um, and you're paying for those ads or whatnot, and then they launch on Snapchat. So now we know that Snapchat is one of the number one social media platforms, especially for the younger demographic. Now, depending on whatever it is you're trying to sell or trying to advertise, you need to understand who it is you are targeting. So for me, my business is services, um, and the main thing that I paid for ads for was for my merchandise. So like my products, I sell lashes, I sell cosmetics, you know, that kind of thing. So the type of demographic I am reaching for is more of like, let's say age 15 to maybe like, 60 and I say 60 because there are women out there like in their 60s who still wear lashes who would you know wear lip gloss my lip oils that I make you know that kind of thing so I don't want to limit myself by cutting it off to like let's say 40 you know so that's why I have I set mine to 15 to like 60 65 is the age that I think I have the cap for and then I allow men and women obviously because you don't want to just set yourself to women it doesn't it just doesn't make any sense especially if you're going in my direction which is with cosmetics um, so with snapchat you know snapchat is a bit more on the younger side um, I cannot give you an age uh, cap as in the maximum age because I don't know I genuinely don't know the demographic the demographics of snapchat itself but when I do my ads I said it the exact same way age is 15 and I say 15 because you know some 15 year olds especially nowadays wear lashes you know and makeup and all that kind of stuff and then they could probably get access to parents cards or have their own cards I don't know I'm not 15 um, in 2020 but so I said it's 15 to 65 even for snapchat and then male and female and I said it to the United States and the United Kingdom because the United Kingdom is also a really good one and Canada um, I am worldwide business, but in the in the terms of a Snapchat ad, that is the what like demographics I set for. Um, and I noticed when I first launched, I was getting a lot of traffic to my site. So my site is ran through Shopify. Shopify, um, I think they have it. Don't quote me on this. At least when I started my business, they had a 
um, sale or a promotion going on where when you first sign up, you can get the first three months for free of Shopify. And after that, Shopify costs $29 a month. Um, to have running and that's like the basis of your shop. Most online stores are either ran through Shopify or WooCommerce um, and Shopify just happens to be the number one so far I believe. Don't quote me on that either. Uh, so on Shopify you have the option to see your live view and who's on your site, how many people, how many sessions you had in the day and all that kind of stuff. So with my Snapchat ad I had seen that I was getting tons and tons of traffic to my site. Now, just because you're getting tons of traffic does not mean that that translates into sales. You know, it just translates into people swiping up and looking at your website and whatnot. So I got a lot of traffic from that. But the thing about Snapchat ads is that, or an ad in general, you gotta make sure you have money for that. So, so they usually say you do better if you're spending $20 a day. Um, in ads and the thing is that if you're a brand new business who has that kind of money if you do wonderful great You're gonna do wonderful. It's gonna be great for you But the harsh reality is is that not a lot of us have that kind of money um, To launch in ads, you know, we're just starting out normally our sales Will now turn into the profit or not profit But the money we make or the money we get which will then get flipped right back into the business regardless if you buy merchandise or merch or um, product to sell um, advertisements, website maintenance, all that kind of stuff. That money that you make from the product you sold will get turned back into stuff you're going to use for the business. It's not going to be something that you're pocketing in your pocket. You know what I mean? It's not going to be profit, um, if that makes sense. So me, I had set mine to $5 a day um, for like five days. So it was like $25 to run the promotion. But I did get maybe two or three sales out of that. So now to this day, I had ran a like a black friday slash cyber monday sale i didn't get not one sale and yeah it's very it's very unfortunate it's disheartening it is what it is it's that's what it's like to be a small business owner now it's not always like that for everyone no um but it is for some and then something else that i also that this will also piggy piggyback off of what i just said um about not getting any sales so for me my marketing is luxury lashes and cosmetics, doll-like style, because why? My branding is doll-like beauty. So I like to sell doll-like cosmetics that makes you feel like a doll and all that kind of stuff. That's just the branding that I'm going for. Um, and my stuff is luxury. So my lashes run from around 20 bucks. You know, I don't sell around the $10 style lashes or whatever, which is fine if you sell those. Um, I do have two pairs of limited edition lashes that I do sell for $10 a piece. Why? I'll tell you. This is also another problem that I ran into being a business owner is buying product to sell, you know? So getting a vendor and all that kind of stuff. So I found vendors through like AliExpress, Alibaba, DHgate, you know, that kind of thing. And I first came into a, a lash vendor. Um, their name is Kiss Darling. I 100% would not recommend them at all. The first batch they sent me, I got a sample pack. I love the lashes. So then I ordered what I sampled. So I ordered maybe like six or seven pair or six or seven styles with 10 pairs each to start there and see which like style sold better. Everything was fine. Everything was good. I got my packaging, everything. So then when it was time to reorder because I sold out of my most popular lash, which is Barbie Tings, the lashes I am wearing right now, which Barbie Tings, um, I went to reorder and when I, and I ended up ordering like 60 units of Barbie Tings itself, 20 units of another lash and then whatever else I need to reorder that I had ran out of or went out of stock. Um, when I got the lashes in the mail, they looked nothing like the original. 60 units of lashes that did not look like the original. Can you believe how upset I was? Like, are you kidding me? So I went through a whole dispute um, with PayPal to fight them to get my money back or do something because I was like, I was sold out of my most popular lash and now I'm not getting any sales because a lot of people are wanting that specific lash that I had and the company themselves were like, oh, well, we hand make it, it's not going to be exactly the same. Um, if you guys want a more in-depth video about what happened with that, I can show you. I have video or pictures and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, do not go with Kiss Darling Vendor on AliExpress or anything like that if you have them on WhatsApp because it was a terrible experience. So I had to go and find another vendor to duplicate or get a close replica that I could a Barbie tank so that way I could, you know, resell them. So you need to have money, of course, to buy um, your product to sell. And then that also takes into account 
how much you sell it for because you want to make a profit. You got to come into, you got to think how much did it cost me per unit to buy? That includes your packaging. So your lash and your packaging, then how much it costs to ship. Most of y'all are getting your stuff for all the other business owners who do something similar to me. That's what I'm talking about talking to also pay for shipping. Shipping from China is a lot of money. So on average, I was spending between 70 to $80 in just shipping alone. Even if my package was like 50 bucks. I'm not saying that's the case, but I'm just saying like shipping is usually a, it's very, very expensive because they go through DHL and I personally love DHL. So I would pay the shipping, but you got to factor that into your price of each lash as you're selling. So then you got that much. So you got to think about how much you sell your, your product for, plus how much you paid for the product, including shipping to you then determines how much you should sell the product for so that way you make a profit off of each item because if not you're not going to be barely making anything and what did i tell you before about how we're new business owners so all of the money that we are making isn't really ours because we're going to flip it and turn it back into the business you know what i mean so the more you keep doing that and the bigger your business gets then eventually it'll turn into actual profit in your pockets that this money is now yours and not going towards the business if that makes sense so that is why also I price my stuff the way I price them because honestly, um, all the other vendors I've worked with and all my lashes and stuff are very high quality. I love my lashes. I, and of course I'm not just saying that because it's my brand, but amazing quality. I love lashes. I wear things like Lily lashes, which is $30 a pair, um, uh, velour lashes, which are very expensive, um, new bumps and lashes, and they feel basically just like them. Take that with what you will. So you charge what you believe you are worth. You know what I mean? So that is why I charge that much. But then also you gotta think about, so then another comment that I used to get was that, oh, you're really expensive. Do not change your prices for nobody. I don't care if I'm not gonna get any sales right now, or, you know, especially with COVID being times are tough, you know, we're spending money on more important things and like makeup and lashes. I totally get that. I understand. I have a family myself, but do not change your prices for no one because you think someone's not gonna pay it. Somebody out there will pay it. Somebody out there will pay. You just got to keep positive and keep the faith. And that's something I had to learn about during my time as a business. When I first launched my business, I did make a lot of sales. I made a lot of money in a short amount of time and all that money got flipped into new inventory so I could branch out and have way more styles and more things. And I was able to, you know, launch more products and pay for more things and more advertisements and that kind of stuff. So when I first launched my business in May, I was rolling. I was doing it. I was flipping and moving and moving and then Everything with COVID had happened and that's what tanked me. That tanked me really bad. So now I'm recovering from that and I know I will. 2021, don't like beauty? We got this, positive. That's a, another big tip. I know I'm all over the place, but somebody is understanding me right now. But remaining positive, you know? We're gonna get there. We're gonna be like one of those big businesses that you've seen in Sephora or Ulta or, you know, famous businesses. Mark my words. So that's why it's not fully bothering me. Um, too bad it is disheartening that, you know, I launched a 30% off sale, you know, 30% off. I, I mainly, I did not run any Snapchat ads or any kind of advertisement, which was probably a downfall for me, but because of COVID and everything going on, you know, things, things are tight right now. So I really couldn't do that. So I was like, I'll just do a 30% off coupon. So I relied on advertising to my friends and family and my social media profiles and not advertising, like paying for advertisements so they can reach further. And I didn't get a single sale. You will get those who say, I'm going to buy from you. I'm going to buy from you. And then don't buy from you. That's just the harsh reality of being a business owner. Same thing with like if you do services or anything like that. People who continue to cancel on you or who don't show up or whatever um, and waste your time. It happens, you know, but then eventually you will learn to not let that get to you. You know what I mean? So I have a lot that I want to say and I really feel like I should break this up into parts. So if you want to see like a part two. Um, to this series or if you want me to make it into a series, I can do that um, and I can try to be a little bit more organized unless you like the chaos that it's, you know, that's going on because it's more real that way. <laughs> Just let me know in the comments down below. Um, I will continue on on that dot that I was talking about with the money though. But I see people all the time who are charging like five dollars for lashes and whatever, and that's fine. It's totally fine. I am not dogging on you. Things that I just think about is how are you profiting off that? Um, because you just got to think about the product, how much that costs. Um, cause sometimes with these vendors, like those, you know, who sell lashes or any kind of vendor, um, have MOQs. MOQs, don't ask me what it actually stands for. I don't know. But from my knowledge, 
I'm aware that it's basically the amount that you can buy. So let's say it's like a wholesale price. So let's say someone's gonna sell you a hundred lashes, like a, a vendor will sell you a hundred lashes for 20 bucks. I don't know, that's just a random number that I'm throwing out there. Or you can get, okay, wait, here's a better example. Let's say you can get a lot of uh, lashes for a dollar a piece only if you buy 200. That's an MOQ, you know? You only get it at that price if you buy that much, which now turns into what? It's $200. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, so that's like stuff that you need to have in mind. So it takes a lot of money to get started. Not a lot of money, but it takes money to get started. Um, faith and positivity that you can get through this kind of thing. Um, knowledge, like, I mean, I didn't really have much knowledge and that's what my downfall was. If I would have kept in mind or known that I need to keep advertising, even though that's a basic no-brainer, um, but like knowing that if you stop, you can really screw yourself up. Also with taxes um, and charging taxes, um, I have a North Carolina like tax license or whatever that I had to get. And something that really just came and like bit me in the butt was later on that I didn't know that my taxes for my business was quarterly and not yearly. Um, so I was late on a lot of taxes and I had to pay all that plus pay like late fees. So that's another thing for those out there who don't know that you gotta check your state's regulations when it comes to running a business and having the tax license um, because you will get bit in the butt for that. So now I have to keep track of, okay, my taxes are due every quarter and I need to make sure that I have, I keep in track, you know, Shopify does all that for you, how much in taxes you're making, how much your, your revenue is and all that kind of stuff. All you gotta do is plug it into the website. It's just a lot. It was a lot. Like I, I was stressed out. I don't do math. I sucked at math. So I had to literally go on the phone with the North Carolina Department of Revenue and have them explain this to me and walk me through paying my taxes for my business because I genuinely did not know. And I was like, what in the hell is this? Like I sat there at the dining room table like close to tears because I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't math. I didn't know about this. I didn't know I was supposed to do this. You know, I got a letter in the mail saying de delinquent from uh, the tax. What? So of course I got that all solved. That was like two months ago when I did all that. But still, like that's something you also got to keep in mind. There's a lot of things you got to look into uh, when it comes to running a business. When I, when I registered my LLC, uh, I had to get a registered agent so that way my address wasn't public to the world. Um, there was just a whole lot of stuff. So if there's anything in this current video that you heard me say that you want me to go over again and go into depth about it, let me know in the comments below. I know that I was all over the place, um, but there was just a lot of things that I wanted to say, at least beginning. I do have more that I could talk about when it comes to the harsh realities of a business or being a business owner. Um, if you want me to turn it into a series, let me know that in the comments. Share this video with other people so that way it can spread because trust me, small businesses is going to be the thing. In 2021, I am manifesting big miracles and big things for us all. Watch. You, one day you're going to be like, wow, Anastasia did say that. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So if you have any other questions about like, cause I've done a lot when it comes to this business. I am now operating like, you know, with my business license, you know, and everything. I always have been since the beginning. It's just that I didn't know about like some things when it comes to running the actual business, like the money part. So one day when I'm rolling in the money, I will have an accountant to handle all this for me because me and math are a big no-no. So if anything you heard that you want me to talk about more in depth or tell you how I did it, you know, all that kind of stuff, just let me know and I will help you with that. I hope you guys have a good rest of your mornings, afternoons, evenings, whenever you see this, whenever I upload this.